Gentlemen, Ashley May, you taking a look at race number eight at Laurel Park on Saturday. This race is for the Phillies and Mares going a one-turn mile. It's the Caesars Wish Stakes. Let's take a look at this field. And the question is, was last time the time for the number four award wanted who was dismissed at 18 to 1 in the Obeya at Delaware and went gate to wire over a very classy Philly and morning matcha? As you can see on the morning line, she's going to be a mere fraction of that price in this spot. Nowhere near odds of 18 to 1. She raced really well also off Lasix. You can see she was running with them for a long time. It seems like to me at Delaware, no one really wanted the lead, and that's why she ended up up front. Um, it's been a while since we've seen her that kind of, um, I want to say, forwardly placed in her races. But it's nice to see her get her second win of the season. She's had some big performances, typically, though, at Laurel. She is rather versatile. She was on the lead on a nice, easy pace last time out at Delaware. But as you see from the Timeform U.S. pace projector, the three cashing big checks off the Lacey Gaudette claim should show some speed. Award Wanted is very comfortable from off the pace. I wonder what intrepid daydreams tactics are going to be. Uh, she's stretching out for the first time. She's certainly bred to handle this distance, and she's pretty fast. Maybe she makes the front. I could see you're kind of pushing it or, you know, being on the front here. I do agree. Cash and big checks basically as sort of one style as of late, and that's going to the front. But you never know with horses coming out of those six furlong events. She's a four-year-old filly who has only gone long once in her career as a two-year-old. So it's really hard to, to make anything out of that. A lot can change in that time period. But she was pretty close to it at Delaware Park in her second career start. And she was able to win going long. But since then, the connections have shortened her up. So I'll have to wait to see what happens this weekend. The number one, Misty Mauve. What a great claim by these connections. They took her for $16,000. They won an off-the-turf stake, the Dahlia, three starts back, and she was just simply in too tough last time out in the Allaire DuPont going a mile and an eighth. Um, the stakes win did come in an off-the-turf race. I think her buyers are a little light compared with some of the others, so she has to step it up a little bit. I think we'll get a little more than the 6-1 to one on the morning line. I would agree, and I completely agree also with the fact that, look at the race last time out, the purse might have not been that big, but you see who won it, Interstate Daydream. Um, even the third-place finisher came back to win next out. It was just way deeper waters. It was going a mile and an eighth. Maybe it's a little farther than she also wants to go. She's been really good at the mile distance. But as you said, her buyers, if that is what you go by, they are light compared to several others in here. Let's take a look at Intrepid Daydream's return off of a lengthy layoff for her four-year-old debut. She was going three-quarters of a mile in this race, and we see her on the outside. She sat a pretty good trip tracking the pace. I thought from a fitness standpoint, she gained a lot from this effort. And as you can see, she's a pretty big, strong filly. She weighs over 1,100 pounds, and her full sister did good work going long. So I think the distance will work, and I think she benefited from that last start. She's an interesting Interesting contender. Nine to five to me is a little bit like considering the distance is an unknown, but she's got a lot of upside potential. I agree. I think nine to five is way too short. We we have seen her go a mile on a 16th once, but it was so long ago. I don't know what you take away from it. It, you know, it was her second career start. What did she really face in that race when you see where horses have gone since then? And from a fitness standpoint, definitely needed the one. You could see her there. She did try for a while, but the winner ended up, you know, drawing clear. That was self isolation, who was uh, also taking respect in there was two to one and some of her best figures are uh, very competitive. And my one thing that I will say when I look at her, when she's won, they've been blowout wins. One was against three other competitors since it was only a field of four. So I do think she's still going to get a little bit of a test here in terms of class. Lacey Godet does good work off the claim. She's going to have to take this one. The three cashing big checks off of Jamie Ness moving turf to dirt. As Ashley mentioned, this Philly style is speed. Uh, we're going to take a look at her most recent dirt start, two back, an off turf race. Well, when she was in for the $40,000 claiming option, I just couldn't see the excuses. She was able to make the lead. She had a clear lead in the stretch, and she's just going to get run down by favored out of sorts. It's a pretty big class ask. It is. And I think looking at her here, she also just seems to, I know she said one other race over an off track. She just tires a little bit. And just looking at how the horses are moving, a couple of them have some late interest. They're moving well, but it looks like a little bit of a tiresome track when everything was said and done. The question is, you've mentioned also, what did she really face? It was off the turf. So I always kind of read into those races with a little bit of caution, just knowing uh, probably not the best dirt horses. They would have gone for a dirt race ra you know, rather than that spot. But from a pace perspective, she's at least interesting nonetheless. And you've mentioned the connections do well off the claim. 
Award Wanted is up next. So consistent. She's hit the board in something like her last nine starts. Angel Cruz gave her a great ride in the Obeya last time out. We'll take a look at that race. There just wasn't any pace on. And Award Wanted walked on the lead. Almost a 25-second opening quarter. She went the half in 49-4. and four, And Cruz pushed the button at just the right time on the second turn to open up the lead. Here comes the big favorite. Morning match on the outside. And Award Wanted is just going to get the tip of her nose down in front at the right time. You wonder too if, um, you know, Angel Cruz doesn't make the move at the right time. Does she get caught? Does she not have the momentum to kind of get the job done here? It's a career best effort for her, a 91 buyer speed figure. But you kind of hit the nail on the head. By almost going 25 to the opening quarter, she found herself on the lead, which really isn't where she's been in the past. I mean, they just went so slow there. You can see in some of her other races, um, they've gone a touch quicker, and she's been second or third or just tracking off of it. So I think when she gets against this group, I don't see her being on the lead out of the gate. I think we're going to see a similar trip to what we've seen in the past. Deco Strong, the number five, is very, very consistent. She's earned almost a quarter of a million dollars in her career. She's coming off an okay third last time out at Laurel, a race where she got speed popped by the quality Princess Kokachin. Deco Strong, we see on the outside here, she's going to eventually forge into third. Uh, she's consistent. I haven't seen that sort of breakout performance this year. She's already run nine times, and I think the mile is the biggest question. They've been very intent on keeping her sprinting for most of her career. Career. I'm not sure how far she wants to go. I'm not sure either, because when you look at her kind of rounding out the minor shares here, third and fourth place finishes at the one turn distances at the six furlong, I really should say, uh, sprinting. It seems like to me, she's just kind of a grinder. She just ends up kind of passing some tired horses, makes a little bit of a rally. It's not like she has a huge late stride that she's really making up so much ground in the final stages. And you have to think, what happens at a mile? Because if she's as far back as she has been in some of her races, she's really going to have to step up and hope for a quick pace. But you're getting those quicker paces in the six for long races. So a little bit of a head scratcher, I think, looking at a record two at Laurel, probably a minor share at best. I think the six hybrid eclipse is extremely dangerous for Brittany Russell because you could argue that she's just completely dirtied up. She didn't run well at all two starts back in the heavenly cause, but it doesn't help when they go 49 seconds to the half and she's trying to rally from last. And last time out in the Obeya, she tried to rally from last. And we've already talked about how no one was really closing into that sort of pace. She should get a better setup here and she has beaten the uh, morning line favorite award wanted in the past. You can just go down the page. Um, they obviously had some high expectations over or thought the potential was there. She was third to nest when you look at the, the race at Belmont at Aqueduct in the grade two Bell Dame. Obviously, nest was simply much the best. But still, she still raced well all in all when you look at that performance. It was a compact field. She's gotten two wins since then. And I think looking at her in the mid-Atlantic, she's been very competitive. I do think maybe you can make an excuse for her last time out. Morning Matcha was probably the class of the field on paper, really the only one that showed that late interest. And as we've already talked about, such a, such slow fractions. Three to one, a very fair price on the classy hybrid eclipse. Top pick time for the Caesars wish. We're both going with award wanted. I wonder if we're making a mistake, if we missed it last time, and now we're jumping on too late. But if she runs anything close to that last speed figure, she's going to be tough, and she's consistent enough. She is consistent. I think the big thing that, you know, when I needed that one more vote of confidence to put her on top is she's shown the ability to hold, pass horses after getting a good trip close right. to the pace where others, right. I have reservations if they actually really want to go forward and pass horses. So, um, yes, she won gate to wire last time out. But when you go to those races, say, uh, back in January and even more recently, she does have uh, at least enough left in the tank late to pick up the pieces. We're both worried about hybrid eclipse. We have our second. We've got the same super, 4625 in the Caesars Wish, the third of three stakes at Laurel on Saturday. Good luck.